servants, youth, the ordinary Dominican, listen to their stories. No limitations, no restrictions, no rules barred. In the spotlight, we'll also spotlight interesting topics, issues, and relevant situations. Don't miss In the Spotlight on Q95 FM Radio every Monday night from 8 p.m. It is 8.37, the time in the studios of Q95. Stick around. We're coming up in just a couple of minutes with our guest. If you are ready, then we are indeed ready. 8.39 is the time on the clock in the studios of Q95 FM Radio. Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the In The Spotlight Radio Show. We do have a wonderful guest in store for you tonight, so we hope that you stick around with us right through the program. We can be found on the In The Spotlight radio and the TV shows page. We also have a fans page, a group, so you can check that out as well. We have a YouTube channel for Dinah F. Frampton. You can go there and subscribe. 
the listeners of Q95 FM Radio, I always say this program is primarily a radio program. This is how it all started. And I always want to uh, recognize and acknowledge my father. You know, my father was a premier broadcaster here in Dominica and great voice. Um, articulation on point pronunciation just name it and that was my dad and to some extent I followed in his footsteps and did some work on national radio for about nine years I am now happily employed at Cable and Wireless Flow Dominica but I continue to do this because I feel it is important that we hear the stories of our people um, you know, just yesterday, um, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, we were having a conversation and she was saying that, I was telling her about the program, and she was saying that, you know, it's good that people have a platform to speak and to share, you know. Um, sometimes I say this program is some form of therapy um, for the guests and for the listeners as well. So it's always a pleasure to be here on a Monday night once I am able to make it here for the program to do this for my guests and for the listeners, you the listeners and the viewers. Those of you who have already joined us on the In The Spotlight radio and TV shows page, we are happy to have you here. Hope you're actually following the page as well. Please remember to do that if you've not done so as yet. So it is Monday, Monday the 17th day of October 2022 and we have guests in studios that I've been trying to get on. <laughs> I've tried a couple of times and he wasn't quite ready. And um, the fact that he's here tonight looking rather well, I must say, um, tonight that we must um, be really happy to have him on the In The Spotlight radio show and joining us uh, tonight. Keep it locked. Uh, we're coming right back right after this.
we start off tonight's In the Spotlight radio show, Intercede by Kenti. And we'll play this one a bit in the background and go across and say good evening to our guests. But before I do that, I just want to read the first paragraph of what he warned us was going to be a very long post um, some time ago. And it said, tonight, as I sit back, relax and think about my life over the last two years specifically i have every reason to give god all the praise and glory for all he has done for me when i look back at where i was mentally emotionally and spiritually 18 months ago and acknowledging where i am today the progress i have made is nothing short of divine intervention. Good evening to you, Ronald. Good evening. Good evening, Fadina. Good evening to your listeners. Thank you for having me here tonight. I tell you, it's my absolute pleasure, you know, to have you um, on the program because I think you have a lot to share. I think you have a lot of experiences uh, to share with us, good and bad. I am sure that you are going to inspire and motivate tonight as well. I truly hope so. Intercede. The first paragraph of that Facebook post. Tell me the connection. Intercede by Ken T. Son of the soil. Son of the soil. You know, that song holds a lot for me because through the struggles, through the trials and tribulations, many of us, a lot of times, we can't find the words. To pray we can't find the words to express so we look to that power that can intercede for us and uh, definitely I've been through many of those times and uh, a lot of times all I could do is just cry out Jesus Jesus and uh, know that God would hear my heart know my heart better than even I do, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I had to trust in his timing and his plan for me. And uh, even when I thought I could not make it through the next day, I did. And through the next week, and the next month, and the next year. And uh, today, I think I'm a stronger person, I'm a better person, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I'm not physically yet, but <laughs> I'm getting there. You're getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. When you did your the promo video, a couple of people inboxed me and even said on on social media under it, why does he look so sad? Well, <laughs> but I, got, I got a lot. <laughs> but it was not about being sad. So just explain. Uh, it's just being out of my comfort zone. Yes. Just <laughs> out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm not one who likes the spotlight. Um, so it was, it was very difficult for me to do this. I mean, you know, you've asked me many times yes. over the past maybe two years to be yes. on the show, and yes. I'm like, nah, this is not me. But over the past 18 months, um, a lot of people felt that I had something to share yes. that would be beneficial to other people so. who are suffering silently, who are struggling silently, and who feel that no one understands what they're going through. No one will, right? Um, but no one is alone. No one is alone. And there's always somebody who will understand what you're going through and possibly help you through it. And um, through mine, I was lucky to get a few human angels who, who did help me. And, and, and that particular Facebook post, I'm in question, you do mention some of them. Oh, yes. And we will go through that at some point um, during the course of the program. I actually went back to look for it mm -hmm. so that, you know, we can, we can, we can go through it. Um, I don't know if I gave you the opportunity to say good evening to, to the listeners and the viewers. Did we say that? I did, yes. You yes, did, yes. yes, yes. You did. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take it from here. And you did indicate, um, Ronald, earlier on that you don't like the spotlight. 
and I get that, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely get that. And, you know, I asked a couple of times, as we indicated before, but then, you know, um, you did tell me at some point, you will, but just let you go through a couple of phases. I suspect it was more than one phase <laughs> trust you, trust you. <laughs> that you were going through. But I'm happy, though, that you're at a good place right now. You're at a better place right now that you can actually share those experiences with us and that we can learn from your experiences and that we can be inspired and motivated, as I indicated earlier. So, Ronald, you're an Astafan. Ronald Astafan, let us talk first about um, the family background, the family history. All right. Um, as, far as, we, as far as you know it. <laughs> yes. I, I honestly don't go back that much in terms of, you know, the, the family history. And right. Things. But I'm the second son of Romina and Hugo Astafan. Um, my dad, Hugo Astafan, better known as Hara, um, is a businessman. Um, an amazing businessman, you know. Um, I wish I had, you know, half of, half of what he had <laughs> when it comes to business. You know, um, my mom opened Guiyav on July 31st, 1981. So this year would have been 41 years. Oh my goodness. Um, a long time. I am on the show tonight, I think, because of her. Yes. And um, because everybody knows me through through Guia. Yes. Um, we have has transitioned over the past 18, 18 months, um, which is by popular belief a major loss for Dominica. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, it's um, it is a loss. But for my mental health, my physical health, my emotional health, I'm in a much better place. Imagine I'm that. in a much better place. So, um, yeah. So are you yeah. saying here, um, Ronald, that every disappointment is a blessing, is a blessing in these guys? They oh, say, yes. oh, we also hear of the saying that everything happens for a, for a reason. We just have to trust in the timing and the plan mm -hmm. of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. It was not it wasn't an easy road. Mm -hmm. And I mean there's still times when it can be difficult. But um I'm happier now. You're happy I'm now. more at peace now. Oh my and ultimately that is my goal to be more at peace. Be more at peace. Simpler life, more at peace. More at peace. To enjoy and to acknowledge and to recognize the simpler things in life. Mm -hmm. You know, later on if we get a chance there's a, a story that um I heard that really resonated with me and um, made a lot of sense. A story. A story. Yes. You can share I mean, it. Can share it we can share it uh, now. I mean, we're we're here or not, <laughs> and we're just gonna flow, and we just we're just gonna go which but, way we go. And let me just go through the family. Yes, and yes. Back there. yes so, like I said, I'm the second son of Romina and Hugo Astafan. Mm -hmm. Um, my eldest son is Joe Fastafan, who um, owns and runs GB Enterprises. And we have a nice little gift for you. Well, thank you. Him. All right. You know? so, so, um, so we must give him a plug in. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, Joe, big up to you. Good night. Oh, yeah. Is that wine? No, it's actually... You can, you can open it, you know. We like to... Yeah, we have a little show off on here. Yeah. We have a little show off. It's Marigo Bay. Oh. I actually... Tasted it by a friend, by Kenty actually. Uh huh. When Kenty had a little um, surprise party for his son, and I love it. Is that a from cream Tenusha. drink? Uh -huh. Is it a rum? It's a cream. It's, it's a cream a, drink. I love cream yes. drinks. So, yes. um, thank you, Joff. And just to give Joff a little plug in, Joff has GBA, GBA Enterprises. Enterprises. Yes. Where is it located? It's located on Independence Street, coming right into Roseau. Okay. The first building after the bridge. First Under building the after the bridge. Yes. So guys, let's give Joff some support. Thank you, again, Joff. Definitely. So he's Definitely. the, he's what number? First. First, okay. Yes, and I'm the second. Okay. Um, my second brother, Kimo, who has platinum security. Mm -hmm. And my baby sister, Tamara, mm -hmm. which not many people in Dominica know, because I found because she lived most of her life out of Dominica. I was about to say, I don't think yeah. I know Tamara. No. I know the boys. <laughs> um, she left since um, through school, and she's only been back basically on holidays, okay. vacation, to visit family and stuff like that. Okay. She's the, the 
mental um, tie strap in the family. <laughs> she you keeps know, everybody in no, check. She's, she's, she's a um, uh, medical psychologist by profession that specializes in postpartum depression, okay. which, is, which is very, very important for pregnant, pregnant women. women. Post, yes. uh, post, post having yes. the baby and yes. this experience. Or even during pregnancy. Yeah. From, what, from what I understand, even during pregnancy. Oh. Because um, your hormones go haywire from the time that egg gets fertilized, I guess. Yes. You know, things go haywire. Some okay. people can handle it very well. Some okay. people glow when they're pregnant. <laughs> yes. Some people have some, you know, some rough times. Yes. So, so, so um, outside of the fact that she deals with postpartum depression for women, mm -hmm. I suspect she has the ability as well to keep the boys in check. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, she may not like this, but she's a female, female version of Ara. Is that so? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> she's super <laughs> <in check>. yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yes. So back to the story. Um, I heard this story some time ago. With, um, there was this group of very wealthy businessmen mm -hmm. who went to this nice tropical island on vacation. You know, sitting on the beach, on the beach chairs, sipping their pina coladas and everything, and watching the group of local fishermen fishing. And as natural businessmen, they couldn't help themselves but to figure or to suggest or even imagine what these fishermen could do better. So they approached them to, and spoke to them about, you know, um, changing the way they do things, maybe forming a cooperative. Mm -hmm and maybe doing agro-processing with the fish, whatever it is. And the fisherman's response was like, okay, we, we form a cooperative, then what? And they're like, okay, well then, you know, you could probably do agro-processing. Um, and their response again was, and for everything, their response was, then what? Mm -hmm. And maybe you could form a company, then what? Then you could employ people, then, then what? what? You know? So basically, to make a long story short, um, the fishermen knew what they wanted and they knew and valued what they had, right. which was a simple, pleasurable life with as little stress as possible. But to the businessmen, it was about building up, building up, building up, building up. And this is what society, life, the system has taught us to work hard and work and work and work and, and earn and gain material stuff. To do what? To come back to the same island on the same beach and have a nice relaxing vacation which is exactly what the fishermen are having because what or what not having but what they're enjoying the nice simple life so the moral of the story the moral of the story is that we already have it but we, we the system life the world whatever you want to call it has taught us to struggle struggle gain everything and then come back and appreciate what you already have mm -hmm. Interesting. You know? So for me, I, I've been on that cycle and I'm, I'm just trying to enjoy and appreciate the simpler things in life. The view of my home, the quiet ambiance. Oh, it's so beautiful yes. out there, out there. there. Oh it's, my goodness. It's my sanity. Yes. It's, um, it's what keeps me going. And maybe every couple of years I find myself falling in love. Oh, but not the materialistic stuff, but just the atmosphere, the birds shipping, the butterflies. Because since Maria, you hardly see butterflies anymore, you know? Um, the quietness. I mean, I am way up in the mountain, but on a very quiet day, I could hear a motorbike passing on the highway. Or a speedboat on the sea, you know? That's how tranquil and... Yes. And, and it's cool, it's nice, it's just... It just keeps you in check with what we have. Paradise, heaven on earth. Definitely. That's what you have. Definitely. It definitely is a beautiful place. Yeah. If, if you've not been up there, um, then I don't know how you can get there if you want to get there. But <laughs> I've been there a couple of times and it really is indeed a beautiful place. Um, Ronald, you, 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 you spoke about your mom um, at the beginning, but I want to hear more about her. Um, the woman that she is? My mom is a very strong woman. Um, 
before she opened Guiab, she worked at the Rosa Credit Union, which is now the National Cooperative Credit Union. Um, and she, she had a knack for cooking. She had a knack for presentation of food. And she would develop her own recipes. She would work with them until she perfected them to her standards, which are very high. Um, my dad's standards are high too. So to please him, mm -hmm. You know, she would have to get there. Um, she opened Guiab in 1981, and I remember going there during the summer. And I, I'm, I'm a proud mama's boy. Good or like it, that's up to them. But I'm a mama's boy. So you mama's mommy, mommy, wherever she well, is. Yes, definitely. Um, so I would go to the restaurant on holidays, and you know, help out work and stuff like that. Um, just driving there today, I remember um, one of my fondest memories was serving some guests at night. She was actually open at night. Um, I think they were acquaintances of my mom's, but um, they felt I was very cute, even if I was skinny, <laughs> with big ears, you were big skinny. eyes. What very, are you? Very skinny. Very skinny. My nickname is actually Skelo, or Skelo, which is short for skeleton. That's how skinny I was. Yeah. So that, was a, that was a different era. That was a different era. So I remember serving these people and uh, towards the evening, the, the lady um, was quite pleased with my service as a young boy. And she gave me a hundred dollar tip. And I was like winning the lottery. I was like, you okay, go. I, I, ain't, I ain't leaving this, this, this business at all. <laughs> you know, so when I was graduating from SME, I, I really couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. So I decided to join my mom at the restaurant. Before I did that, I went on a two-year course, culinary course in Cyprus. I did a two-year course. I got a scholarship from the government. At the time, the scholarships were available and no one was taking them up because then um, it was not culinary arts, it was cooking. You know, even when I left, um, there was a bit of an uproar in Dominica among um, people who knew the family, like a man going to study to, to cook. You know, because in, in our mindset at that time, that was in 1987, mm -hmm. that was woman's, a woman's mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. you know. And even if it, it kind of affected me a bit with my self-confidence, I still decided to go. And when I got there, I got the shock of my life where there were very few women in the kitchen. More men. More men, you know. And the women in the kitchen really had to struggle to, to move up. up. Yeah. You know, and it was really a, a, a eye opener to what is going on outside of Dominica mm -hmm. and stuff. So I did this two year course in, in, in culinary arts and then I returned and I joined my mom at the restaurant and then um, we moved from there. At the time we were just located upstairs of the premises. Okay. And um, So had mom given up her job? Yes. So she went into this full yes, time? Full time. Okay. And um, she, she had done a course at the Culinary Institute of America and she also did a course in Guadalupe, I believe, or Martinique, I can't remember exactly, in pastries. So her dream was to open up a patisserie, mm -hmm. a pastry shop in Dominica. And she saw that through. And so I was, I was fortunate to be with her. She had a baby. I was keeping the old part running while she did her stuff. And then after I joined and then we started getting to catering and then we just grew and grew and grew until Guia became a household name. How did the, do you know how the name Guia came about? It Which? was actually, um, it came about from Orin Bully. Orin Bully is the one who came up with the name. It's Creole for Guava. Uh -huh. yeah, so Orin Bully who did the Dominica, who designed Dominica Flag, he's mm -hmm. the one who, who, who named Guia. Uh, did he say any reason why he went and Guava? Honestly, yeah. if, if he did, I'm not, not privy so sure. to that information. Right. No. I, I, I never dug to find out. So was it just Guia? Because I know there was a, there's Guia, I, I know of Guia Patisserie. What was the yeah. original? It was just Guia at the at beginning. And then um, my mom turned it into a company, which my siblings and I are all shareholders. So it's it's really we have limited. So, we have limited. At the time it was we have restaurant, patisserie and catering services. I see. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, so, so your mom started this business. What did you initially start off with? Just the pastries? No, pastries came on after. Came after. Yes. Okay. So she what happened? The did restaurant, she start with? just the local cuisine. Local cuisine. With, you know, local cuisine with an international twist in terms of Dominicans have the provision. You know, so obviously we would have our provision platters, mm -hmm. but then you would do um, like bread for puffs or green uh -huh. banana balls, so right. you know that kind of stuff like that, and so forth. Um, so my mom took great pride in ensuring that the freshest local produce was used. It was a no-no to bring in any kind of, for instance, even when fruits were scarce, to use syrups and stuff like that. No. She would rather was, not do that, it. That was unheard of. That was unheard of. So everything had to be fresh. Everything had to be locally produced or locally um, sourced, right? And she would she would come up with ways of of making it to suit the palates of both locals and foreigners. Because you wanted them, the foreigners to taste our local produce, but not everything would would sit right with their palate. So then she would work on those things. Right. When your mom opened her restaurant um, in Dominica, um, are you aware of other restaurants that were... Um... I think there were a few. Mm -hmm. Laro Creole, um, La Green Rock Parrot. Creole, yes. Um, there just, just, were just a few at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. There were others. I can't I can recall them right now. And and you and you're saying the the differentiator for mm -hmm. your mom's restaurant from the others mm -hmm. was the international feel right. that she gave. Um, yeah. to, what was business like back then, if you if you can recount? I remember in the eighties it was it was very promising, very very promising in the eighties, and um, that is why. Towards the end of the 80s, in 1987, 89, she decided to start working on the patisserie. Okay. So we could expand because the office was getting way too small. We couldn't handle the traffic right. up there at that time. So then she did the patisserie downstairs and it, it, was, it was a hit from day one. Mm -hmm. you know? What were some of the things that, that people could get um, mm -hmm. in terms of the patisserie? But the, the most popular item in the party in terms of pastries was the party banana. Mm, yes. The oh, party banana. That party banana used to be moist yeah. and, and really gooey and nice. So you do There's whatever you put nothing better than a hot party banana. <laughs> <laughs> a hot party banana. Yes, yes. But I mean, we did a wide range I of pastries. I love the sausage rolls. The sausage rolls. Yes, yes. I used to. Sausage in rolls. there, you would have the nice, whatever sauce you had in there. And again, I think what mattered was that nothing was dry. Everything had flavor mm -hmm. and everything was nice and moist. So I remember the sausage roll would have this nice little sauce in it, whatever it is, the sauce that yes, you had, yeah. and then the sausage in there. But the pastry itself was very soft, and you know, you could just bite into it. And that is a pastry that my mom developed the recipe over the years, and she mastered it. And um, she taught our longtime pastry cook, Marcus White, who, who who joined us or joined even I didn't think he was there before me, you know, and he's still with me to this day, you know, very loyal. And um, he's mastered the pastries. Um, that is one thing that a lot of returning Dominicans or visitors would say is the consistency of the pastry would be on point. It would be on point. Yes. Um, and as you said, you know, we have really was a household name. I always enjoyed their going to get Patty Banan in particular, and as I said, I really enjoyed um, the, the sausage roll. What was the general feedback of the, oh, my sister is saying yes. <laughs> she gave us, is it the Patty Banan you used to get to? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Regina Walsh is saying, Fatina, I love this guy, he's such a great soul. Mm -hmm. And she talks about her daughter as well. Um, who all love you to the moon and back. I suspect you have quite a few of those. Um, <laughs> Where's yes, 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 yes. So it's always been a support on her entire family. Yes, my sister is a green yeah. departed banana and it used to be so moist. Yes, that was important. Yeah. What was the feedback generally of the Dominican public to Guia? Generally, mm -hmm. it has been very positive. Mm -hmm. Very positive. 
Um, like every other business, um, you have some people that just won't support for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, but this will be very few. in the minority. Very, very, in the minority. very much so. Mm -hmm. Very much so. But generally, we have um, the feedback from customers. General public has always been very supportive. At what generally. point did Mom say, um, "Hang up my chef hat or cap"? Whatever it is. Um, what is it that you are it, was, it wasn't a choice. It wasn't a choice of us. Oh. Unfortunately, the, this type of business takes a toll on your health. And unfortunately, a few years ago, she had a mild heart attack. And then a few years after, she had a stroke. So she definitely had no choice but to take a step back. Oh. Um, it was very hard for her because this was her life. And uh, mommy loves cooking. Yes. You know, um, that's one of her ways of showing her love, you know. So that was hard for her oh, yes. to, to not be in the kitchen, yeah. not be able to come and prepare her favorite desserts, food, all of that for her mm -hmm. customers. How is oh, yeah. she? How is she, Ronald? She is doing okay. okay. She's missing Dominica. She's not in Dominica. Oh, she's anymore. not here. No, she's my sister in Tampa. Okay. Um, but she's missing home. Um, she was. She spent about six weeks with me of early on this year, in the summer for her birthday. Um, she's doing okay, you know. Okay. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is continue to pray for mommy. Oh, definitely. So she can continue definitely. to be okay. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, we'll keep in our prayers, think about her, mm -hmm. and hope that she continues to get. Um, better so if mommy is listening tonight you know, she is, <laughs> she, she is yes, less yes the dominican public sends love to you and um you know it really saddened us when your your um you had to close the doors of your of your restaurant your baby that you started would be uh celebrating 41 years um this year but we appreciated what we got over the 30 something odd years before you actually had to um, close the doors of that. Um, so Ronald, how did you now get to the point of taking over, um, running the business, seeing that mommy had to hang her hat, you know, through no decision of hers, yeah. but how did that come into play? Uh, mommy basically handed over the business to me a long time ago. Okay. I mean, although she was there, mm -hmm. but. Um, I was basically responsible for the general um, overseeing of the entire business. So we did, we, have, we really made a good team, especially when we when it came to catering, mm -hmm. because she would be, you know, um, at the restaurant in the kitchen ensuring that the quality of the food and the presentation is up to mark, and I would have to deal with the staff and the venue to ensure that the, the venue is set up properly, the mm -hmm. service is up to mark that the food that is that comes from Guiao, right um, the quality the is maintained through transportation and, and and service you know throughout the night and ensure that everything was was good so you know it's it it was a partnership for a very long time where we both had our our roles to play so we could expand and, and ensure that the the public is given the best possible experience and it's not just a plate of food it's an experience it's an experience it's an experience from the service to the you know to the presentation the taste you know we all eat with our eyes before we eat with our mouth if food doesn't look good you know and sunday is is, is a testimony to that well let's not even go there so we're gonna go there we're gonna go there because some people who are on social media are already mm -hmm. aware of that. One person said, "If you come with anything there tonight, it's war." Mm -hmm. um, so in a while, we're gonna <laughs> let him know, you know, what's there. Um, yes, Ronald. You know, so you had this spread on Sunday morning to which you invited me, and I could not make it. Um, and then, you know, people give me all people said you should take a helicopter to go there, you know, whatever the case might be. And you know, as you said, people eat with their eyes first. And when I saw that, my heart literally broke <laughs> into pieces. All of my, I'm a foodie and I'm never ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed to say that well, I love food. Well, most people eat to stay alive, 
I still like to eat. You still like to eat. I love I'm that. A big, I'm a big foodie. <laughs> I'm a big foodie. There was crab backs. Right. And by the way, you do crab, crab backs and we'll talk yes. about that as well. So, so as I've rebranded myself. So yeah, so we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about the that. rebrand in a yes. while after we talk about you know what transpired. Mm -hmm. And there was black pudding, another of my favorites. Or you can call me Chick Chick Maje, or you can call me what, or what I don't care. I saw Acres, I suspect uh, they were Teach Me Acres. Um, what else did I see? Yeah, sauce. Sauce. I, I, I do sauce, but the bones. I like to just mm. chew on the bones. Mm. And there was something. The stuffed eggs. There was my favorite thing in the whole yes. wide world. Yeah, that, yeah. that one is what broke my yeah. heart. And the presentation. Mm. And you speak about that being one of the key things for your business, for your restaurant, for your catering service. Mm. The presentation is key. And that presentation, just for a little spread you are at your home. Well, you know, it goes back to my mom again. Yes. I remember my mom always used to be feeding our friends, you know, and um, her friends and everything. And I used to be like, mommy, this people coming for free food. Why are you making such a big deal about oh that? My God. You know, just put the food for them. You know, no, no, she didn't care. no, 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 no. Her know? reputation she has to it. be. You know, and then she, she led me to understand that, Ronald, if somebody comes to your home and doesn't enjoy what you serve them, mm -hmm. they're not going to come to the business. She's right. You know, and so I, 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 I went on that bandwagon also and everything has to, even when I'm home alone, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm doing my cocoa, um, my cocoa has to. Have, you like to show off us on oh, yes. a little bit yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has to have my coconut, coconut oil in it, and maybe some whipped cream and some cinnamon and nutmeg on top, because those little things bring joy to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to wait for somebody else to make you happy. Mm -hmm. So if you can make yourself happy through simple stuff like preparing a nice meal for yourself, right? You know, and that's what Sunday was about. You know, in the rebranding and the past few weeks have been really rough in terms of, when I say rough, not in a negative sense, right. but really busy mm -hmm. from sun up to sundown, working, working, working. And I'm trying to remember if I've ever had sauce since we have closed. I don't think I had sauce <laughs> since we have closed down. So I'm like, you know what? Nah, this weekend is going to go all out. All out. Yeah, they were go guavas. Out. Was that from yeah, your? From my, from my trees. From yes. your trees. Yeah. And the, even the guavas were these cut in a design <laughs> way. Now you said that you love, um, you love making yourself happy. You love making mm. people happy. And but I suspect you have stuff in the boxes there that's going to yeah. make me happy. So it will um, make you happy, but it will make some people cry. It will make some people cry. Yeah. When we show in themselves. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Wolf, my darling, good evening yeah. to you. Well, you know, you know um, Charles Wolf needs to, to, to relax himself. Oh my God, I'm so if, if he keeps going on that way, we're going to work him more and more. And I told him yeah. and Judy that he need to block me till after family. <laughs> I think so. Right. Yeah. So guys, keep your eyes closed. Oh my goodness. So, we have an array of pastries. Just a second, just a second. Oh my goodness, look at that, guys. Look at that. Oh my, oh my goodness, look at that. What's there? So we have um, beef pies, uh -huh. mini party banana, uh -huh. fruit tarts, and quiche. And quiche. Yeah. And guys, that's only box number one. And There's box two boxes. One. There's two boxes. Yes. Right. I love food. Okay. So this one, the first box was done by Marcus. Right. Which is on a pastry cook. Right. The second one was done by me. And um, uh, we don't need to hear about the design of the food. I don't want to see. Please do not call my name, uh, Charles Wolf. Oh. So <laughs> no, you did that just like everyone now. <laughs> oh, guys, look at that! Oh my God, bring it closer. Okay then, crab box, pa vini marebwe pu. Mwen Papa Shil. <laughs> Ronald, I am so excited. I can't wait. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we're going to talk about that in a while. Sure. Um, oh, it smells so good. Yeah, some people are really hating on they are really hating on me right now. But let me tell you guys about it. This is not people are saying, this is not fair. Those crab bags. Mm, 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 mm. Ronald? Okay. 
Let us go back to Bria. So all of this goodness that you just showed to me was available to your customers for over, for close to 40 years. When we close down, we were just like about two weeks short of our 40th anniversary. Two weeks short of 40th anniversary. In that same location, you Same stayed. location. You never moved. Never moved. Why? Never moved. The, the building actually belonged to my grandmother. Okay. So um, my mom occupied it, which was my mom's mother. Um, she's still alive, 95 years. Oh. My darling. Yeah. You love her? Yes. I had to go by her tonight for my blessing before I came here. Oh, um, my. You know, so the building belonged to her. We purchased it from her maybe about, what, 16 years ago, okay. I think. Okay. Yeah. So there was no need to move. Same and I mean, what better location than the center of Roseau? You know, we have, it was, is, is situated in the center of Roseau. So location you, is you, ideal. You couldn't miss it. Location, yeah, location, location, location. You couldn't ideal. miss it. Ideal. So business was going well for a while. For a while. For a while. Yes. What happened? I mean, like everything has an ups and downs. Mm -hmm. even, even when things were going good, you know, you still have your struggles and everything like that. Um, Ross was our major customer. We did all or most of Ross large okay. catering events. Okay. So. I didn't know like that. Like Dominica, I mean, Ross was a major part of Dominica's economy. Of Ross course. was a major part of Guyard's business. Um, so after Maria, when they decided to leave, that was a hard blow for us. Because a lot of our investment was done to keep Ross and keep them happy and expand mm -hmm. with them. Because every year they were expanding. So every year, I remember when we first started to do stuff for them, it was maybe 50 people, 60 people. The largest event we ever did for us was like something like 800 people, mm -hmm. you know, 800 people. How regular was their business run out? Very regular. Very regular. Very regular. Every semester they would have a welcome barbecue mm -hmm. for the students. And that was you? Yes. So we would go down with uh, my entire team. And when I say me, not me, we have, you know, but it's always team we have. It's yes. never me alone. Yes. Um, I know that about yes. you. And, um, the barbecue, a welcome barbecue for them. Every semester they would have a white coat ceremony and they started like a, a past the night. Um, then you had the annual um, staff awards dinner, which was a huge event that, you know, I would have as much as 40 people on staff mm -hmm. to get this going. Wow. And um, depending on what venue they chose, it would not just be food service staff. It would entail plumbers, electricians, you know, just name it, you know, because we had to ensure that everything was on point, especially if they use my home, which we do weddings, events and everything like that. Um, they had a few of their, um, their banquets also, you know, their fourth semester banquets and stuff like that. I remember the first time they asked me about it. Um, I think they were having a problem getting a venue to hold as many, much as 400 people. And I'm um, like, I'll give it a try. I shiver 400? Yeah, 400, yeah. Up there. Oh, yeah. Three course meal with orders before, full bar, everything like that. I mean, needless to say, I, I, I used to make a joke then that the customers pay me to pop pressure pills. Because, I mean, at that time, my shoulders would be that high from the stress of mm -hmm. managing everything. But the, the satisfaction you get from seeing the joy on people's face when they are having a good event, mm. when they enjoy the food, when they enjoy the atmosphere, the service. I mean, if money wasn't an option, there was no need to pay, but mm -hmm. that wasn't an option not to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> not to get paid. So Ross University was your primary customer. Yes. So obviously, <clears throat> When, when did you hear of the news of Ross's departure and where were you if you remember and what went through your mind? To be very honest, because I spent a lot of time at Ross, mm -hmm. um, I got the sense that something wasn't right. When the news came, it, <clears throat> wasn't, it wasn't surprising and I think for the first two, three weeks I was just numb because I knew the impact it was going to have 
on my business. And not just the business, but the many contracted people that we would hire for events. Um, because to do an event down at Ross would entail hiring truck drivers, you know, um, partnering with other service providers for tables and chairs or whatever it is you needed, lights. This so there, was a, there would be a domino oh, effect. Yes, there's a, a huge domino effect. You know, um, I think I was numb for a while and um, I kind of had to snap myself out and figure out how the hell are we going to get out of this, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I think as time went, went on. Um, Who were you, were you upset? Who were you mad at for that? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was mad, and I'm still mad, at the authorities for not doing what I felt needed to be done. Obviously, I do not know all the facts mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. went on, um, but that situation is something that mountains should have been moved to keep Ross in down with you, you know? And, and not just for you? No, but for not for me. I mean, Think of all the, the, the landlords in, 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 in Portsmouth, all the restaurants in Portsmouth. I mean, Ross, basically, a lot of the students, a lot of the staff, um, faculty, um, asked on numerous occasions for us to open a, 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 a branch down there. And uh, I just felt something wasn't right, something was not going to work out. So. I, I made a commitment to do everything I, I could do to ensure that the catered events was a huge success. Yes. You know, and I worked with some amazing people down the road. You know, some amazing people in the events departments and, you know, the, all the different departments. Um, but I felt that this was going to be a risk that I wasn't willing to take. Because I, I, I got this sense and it's not from overhearing anything or, or seeing anything per se, but I just got the sense that something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And it, it seemed a little bit unstable for me to, to open another branch and, and incur that level of debt to, to, to open another branch down at Ross. Yes, yes. And so on. Oh, just on a um, light note, you know, someone says that um, he used to get real red like pepper oh yeah. doing Rossi. Oh yes, yes. Oh yes. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. So, uh, so you said at some point, Ronald, you had to snap out of the yeah. this, this zone that you were in, you know, mm -hmm. having to having gotten the news and mm -hmm. knowing how it was going to impact your business. How did you do that and what was the what was the immediate reaction as to what am I going to do? Uh, at the time I think we have employed as much as twenty people full time. And you know the, the security of my staff was paramount, and we had to figure out what other corporate clients could fill in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you would need maybe 20, mm -hmm. 24 other corporate clients, local corporate clients that could fill in the void of us. And that never materialized. That never materialized. As time went along. Um, the business environment in Dominica got much more difficult for many reasons and so the spending power of businesses for events that would be considered, um, how can I put it? Um, that were not paramount in terms of putting a profit to these companies um, affected their decision to do events, to do staff events, to do corporate events, you know, that kind of stuff like that. So the, the, the so opportunities... Outside, yes, so outside address. of Ross, outside of Ross, mm -hmm. where you did majority of your catering, mm -hmm. you also did that as well? Across the board. Across the board. Yes. Okay. Across the board. Okay. And, and the, the, the dynamics in Dominica is that Ross business, which was profitable, allowed us 
to keep the day to day running. Right. I remember, I mean, it's been many years I've been discussing with people about closing down mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the level of stress and stuff like that and going strictly into catering and stuff like that. And a lot of people felt that the day to day was the face of the business. So you needed that to bring the, kit, the um, clients for catering. Right. Out. And the catering business was paramount to keep the day-to-day -day running because the day-to-day -day running was not profitable. Okay, you were not it's even not breaking even. No, it wasn't profitable. Okay. Because you're between a happy and a rock. Yeah. Where the, the cost of, of operations is increasing, but you can't necessarily raise your prices as you should in order to be profitable because people just can't afford yes, it. Okay. People just can't afford it. You um, provided employment well, for many over the years. So when you think about that, you know, are the people you help to send their children to school, mm -hmm. to buy a car, to mm -hmm. build a house, you know you've done yes. that, right? Um, that is where I think would have impacted you when you realized that you were losing that business of Ross and there in the future could be the possibility of closing your business. Mm -hmm. What did you think in terms of your staff? You spoke about the gentleman who's been with you mm -hmm. for a very, very long time. The one who made the pastries, yes. you know. Um, it must be heartbreaking, or it must have been heartbreaking. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When, you, when you would have had to make that decision. So, Ronald, over what, what period of time that you became closer and closer to deciding, I, I can't, I can no longer continue to keep the doors that we have open? It started about eight months, to eight to twelve months before we actually closed down. Um, I remember the about four to six weeks before, yeah, I was not in a good place. Oh my. Very, very bad place. Um, I was Crying uncontrollably, I couldn't crying. control it. I couldn't control it. Oh my! Goodness. Just talking or just thinking about it, I would cry. Um, eventually, I just said, you know what? It was important to me that if we had to close down, that we close down while we were on top. That our quality was still good. You know, our service was still good. I didn't want to have to close down because we had run down so much that nobody wanted to see or hear about we have anymore. And stuff like that. Um, yeah. Left up to me, I would have closed them a long time yeah, ago. But I, I stuck it out hoping that something would have changed for the staff mm -hmm. so they could stay employed. Yes, and yes. Stuff like that. So you were still hopeful? I was That's something still that hopeful. Would turn around? Yes. Yes. I'm going to read I'm gonna read something from the post. And you, you wrote, When I began seriously contemplating closing down my family business, after 40 years in operation, serving the Dominican public and visitors with distinction, I felt each day I would not be able to make it to the next due to the level of anxiety, depression, and stress. So you wrote there about the anxiety, the depression, and the stress. Every day you said you cried. Okay. For uncontrollably. Two, two and a half months. For two and a half two months, you literally cried every right. day uncontrollably. Yeah. There was a there was a point, I mean I only realized it after I started to pull myself together. And um, Judy Lawrence Larock played a major part in helping me pull myself together. Mm -hmm. um, but only after I, I tried to pull myself together I realized there were things where two, three days would pass and I wouldn't bathe, brush my teeth, or even eat. That's like a go GP, like we see yeah. a go in I local. Sleeping with your eyes open, but you know, um, yeah, because I would not leave my room. And, and I'm, I'm the typical um, man who who retreats to his cave when things are not going right. Okay. So no one could talk to me. No one could console Don't me. Don't even try. Don't try. You Don't just, come. You, you just irritate me. What if they come up to? Uh, no, no. Don't bother. First of, all, first of all, it's a general rule. Nobody comes to my home unannounced. Okay. I will not open my doors if that happens. I, there's a reason why I went so far to leave for my peace and quiet. 
and my privacy. Yes. You know? So, um, no. And people who know me well, no, don't try that. Don't try that. It's not going to end well. Yeah. You know? You'll stay outside. You'll stay outside. Mm -hmm. The dogs will come at you. <laughs> So, so for about two and a half months you did that. Was that mm -hmm. after you closed or before you closed? The two and a half months was after I closed. After you closed. The, 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 the time before I closed? Yes. It was rough. Yes. But I had to suck it up and still go to work. Okay. You know, at okay. least every other day or something. Okay. You know, but I couldn't handle more than three, four hours a day at a time. How did you tell your people? My staff? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a general meeting with them. Okay. Um, I, I, I told them a few weeks before um, the actual date that I had chosen to close down because I realized with the economy, with the, the rate at which the cost of the business was increasing, that every day I stayed in business, I was going to be more and more in debt. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I had to buy the boat. Yes. Um, today, um, I still have a lot of financial stuff to deal with, God is but good. I'm in a much better Best position. Place. I'm in a much better position. I, I, I want to again um, reference your post because it was a really deep post. And you, you also, you know, highlighted a few persons as well. So I will go on further. For those who have not, you know, who have not seen it or have not read it. Um, yes, you continued by saying, but God had his own plan for me. Just yeah. one second. It just disappeared there for me one minute. Let me just get back to it. Sometimes your fingers, you know, on those phones, they just, um, mm -hmm. they just make a disappearing act. So let me go back here and go back to, um, yes. Okay, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back and read it. Um, yes, so basically you were, you were, you, you wrote very, um, deeply in that particular post. Uh, why am I not finding it? One second. Let's go back again. Go back. Don't worry, Facebook will get it. Okay. Yes, it's, 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 it's important. It's an important post um, that kind of helps our, our conversation here tonight as well. So just try to just bear with us. Let's just do this, um, this quick promo and then we'll come back. Oh my God, today, yes, right here, we're coming right back. Let me find it so we can continue. Hopes and aspirations on told stories, touching the human and personal side of all people in politics. Religion, sports, business, music, culture, the media, and more. Getting to know our farmers, public servants, youth, the ordinary Dominican. Listen to their stories. No limitations, no restrictions, no rules barred. In the spotlight, we'll also spotlight interesting topics, issues, and relevant situations. Don't miss in the spotlight on Q95 FM radio every Monday night from 8 p.m. All right, and we are indeed back. We have it. So um, Ronald goes on to say, unfortunately, I did not take the time to muster up the faith to trust in his plan and his timing. Needless to say, besides all the usual stress of terminating business operations, after so long, it was a real eye-opener to see the many people you held in such high esteem, cared for, sacrificed for, helped, and encouraged over the years were nowhere to be found. Not surprising. I should have expected that. Yeah, I know, but when the reality hits, it still affects you. However, at the point I am in my life, I am very happy it went on like that. 
you lost a genuine friend, and I got rid of excess weight. Definitely. That is important, Ronald. Oh, yes. You do not have to call anyone's names. No. But when you, when you make reference to that, um, how huge was that? In that the people you expected to be there for you were not. It, I mean, it, to any decent human being, it would hurt to the core. Mm -hmm. It would hurt to the core. Um, at the time, it hurt. I couldn't understand. Even if you've heard about it before, mm -hmm. you've experienced it in smaller doses before, you know? But this is the biggest tragedy, I would say, in my life, besides losing a family member or anything of that sort. And um, everybody who knows me um, knows that Kuya was my wife. Yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> my past girlfriends had to know that Guia came first. Right. You know, um, so Guia was everything for me. Guia was everything for me. I mean, there was a time when I would be working 15, 18 hours a day. Probably just go home, take a shower and come back. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I had to also recognize that my personality is not one that is easy to deal with when I'm going through tragedy okay. because I shut people down. You, you people become out. introverted yes, right away. Very much you so. You retreat. Yes, very much so. I mean, there were a lot of people who would message me and they, my response to them would just be an emoji. Because I, I, I couldn't, if I said anything more, mm -hmm. I would end up crying. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wouldn't know when it would stop. Right, wow. So it was just like an emoji is what most I could do. Yeah. Um, I am one that no one could say that they message me and I ignore them because right. I think it's very rude. I, 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 I've tried to do it and I can't. Um, no matter how much somebody pisses me off, if they message me, even if I curse them off, I'll curse them off. But I will not ignore. I, I, I can't do that. I've tried to do it, I can't do it. Um, but I know I'm not an easy person to deal with when it comes to stuff like that. Is it that, Ronald, that you, you turned to a couple of people for help, but they did not reciprocate that help that you, no, you were asking for? I, I really have asked for help. You don't? No, I'm not that one. Mm -hmm. um, I have been chastised quite a bit by, by close people that I'm always there for people, mm -hmm. but I never allow people to be there for me. You know? Um, but it, there's a difference. In, in, in that humans humans are getting more and more inhumane you know and the other day I had I, 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 I'm constantly on my jet blue flights nowadays is that so? <laughs> my jet blue flights nowadays and you know I go into deep thought then and the other day this, this question just popped into my mind Who's your hero? And the only thing I can come up with is that my hero is the version of me I want to be. Okay. Your hero is the version, the version of, of you I would like that to you would like to be. be. Yes. And who is that person you would have liked to be, Ronald? I mean, I'm getting there. You're getting there. Um, someone who, who can be there for others. Someone who can make others happy. Someone who can make himself happy. Because most, yes, you know. most of my life, most of my life, I've traveled by myself. I always travel There's by no myself. There's no fun in that. No, <laughs> no, it, it is because I've had so many friends who I saw totally lost when their relationships broke up. That they were lost because they they, they they couldn't figure out how to make themselves happy. They depended on others to make them happy. Mm -hmm. So I, I made a conscious decision years ago that that wasn't going to happen to me. Okay. And traveling alone can be a lot of fun. It can be. If you're a person that would, that, that's open to making new friends, yes. to speaking to new people, you know, to try new experiences, you know. But I mean, when I travel, I go to the movies, I go to restaurants, I go to discos, I go to bars, I, I do everything by myself. I mean, I do with other people also, mm. but I make sure I take time to do those things by myself and ensure I can enjoy it by myself. Is that something you intend to change sometime in the future? No. no, I mean I would do it for other people, Yes, but I'll always do stuff by myself. You'll always do stuff by yourself. Yeah. 
Okay. Because people won't always be there for you. No, they won't. Right? <laughs> they won't. They will be there for you. So I have to ensure that I keep that in check. True. You know? True. So then when nobody's there, then I can dig deep down within myself and find what it is to make me get through to the next day. Right. Um, and so you went through that phase for about two and a half months. And then you start mentioning the names of a few people mm. in that particular post that you made and you mentioned Judy, mm -hmm. um, Judy Larock or Judy Lawrence Larock. Um, you mentioned her. Tell me when that process from coming out of the retreats, mm -hmm. um, crying, mm -hmm. being depressed, mm -hmm. what was the first action that started getting me out of that phase? I, I, I don't remember how how it is I contacted Judy or Judy contacted me. Right. But I do know everybody felt they had to give their opinion on what you should do now. You know, why don't you do this now? Why don't you try this now? <laughs> and I'm like, look, just shut the F up. I, I don't need to be there in this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Judy was the first person who came to me. She came, actually came to my home with her husband and sat and prayed with me and reminded me that I would not be the first business person to close down mm -hmm. this business and I would be the last. Mm -hmm. And no matter what it is, I have to take time for myself. Nothing that I try to do now would work because mentally I was You're not, not there. ready. Mm -mm. I was not ready. It's just like, it's just like you trying to love somebody who's not capable of receiving love. You would drain yourself and nothing good would come out of it. So I had to take the time, you know, and she would be in contact with me daily, calling me, messaging me, reminding me, I'm gonna just put you first. Mm -hmm. So by that time, you started accepting calls or messages. But actually, you started communicating. Actually, if I remember correctly, no, if I remember correctly, I contacted Judy before I closed, oh. trying to, you know, because I remember that um, she had gone through a similar experience, yes. and um, Judy and myself go way back from Voices of Fatima when we used to be together in Voices of Fatima at Fatima Church um, with her brother Kerry and her sister Jana and so many others. That's still around. So that's how we got to know each other. And she was at then Scotia Bank and everything like that, you know. And Judy and myself um, were cool. No? I did her wedding actually. I came oh. for her wedding. No? Um, she worked at Ross for a while, so she would always look out for me there and stuff like that. But it's not like we were in contact with each other on a daily basis or even a weekly basis or even a monthly basis, okay. you know, and so forth. And um, she really came through for me. Came through for me in a way that no one else did. Um, just reminded me to put God first mm -hmm. and to take care of yourself. Did you listen? Oh, yes, I did. I mean, there are times when she would call me, Did you go walking this morning? Because she was trying to get me to get up and get out of the room and go walking and so. And yeah, well, Judy, I like to your few times. <laughs> <laughs> I write to you a few times, but um, I did listen to her a lot, and even to this day, we, you know, we're in contact off and on, you know, and um, for sure. Tell me more about the healing process and getting to the point that you are today. You actually used the word happy, you know that, right, at the beginning of did the I? show? Did I? You did. I think I said happier. Happier. <laughs> okay, happier. Um, to be honest, I'm not I'm not one to pay myself compliments. A lot of people tell me I need to take compliments better. But um, I'm watching myself on the screen and I'm damn I'm good looking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> something something's up with your camera. I like that. <laughs> um, but I actually I for the process I actually saw my face change. I actually saw my face change. Um, a couple of people mentioned it. Um, Nothing would have continued if I didn't take the time off to recognize the power of God, the power of the universe, the power of simplicity, 
also recognizing the fact that society, the system, everything has screwed us up. They've taught us wrong about everything. I, I have tried to remember from my childhood, growing up or so, where we were taught about happiness. We were taught, taught about being peaceful. There was nothing like that. It's always about working and studying and money and nah, no, no, no. Right now, they can come and take my house once they leave my land for me with all my fruit trees, my vegetable garden, and my dogs. I'm good. You're good. You know, and even after my depression, um, all my fish died. I, I I just couldn't take care of them. Oh Thank, thankfully, I had. Um, my caretaker who helps me at the house, Pierre, a Haitian guy who is amazing. If it wasn't for him, I think my dogs would have died too. Because it didn't matter to me whether they got fed or they, you know, because I wasn't feeding myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, a common meal for me then was bread and cheese. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's not because I couldn't do better, it's just because I just didn't, just didn't matter to me at the time, you know? Did you understand at the time, though, that you were going through a depression? Yeah, because I've been through depression a lot in the past. Okay. And I had to remind myself that, Ronald, you've been there before. This one is a little more severe. Yes. And you've been out. Yeah. You know? Did, so you, did you get professional help or did you just... Yeah. Well, my, my long-time therapist, Lester Guy, who is amazing, this guy has saved my life. A number of times, and um, it's good. But I also saw Dr. Wallace for a short while. But Ronald, you know, sometimes people feel embarrassed nah. for you know having to go to professionals for things, mm -hmm. experiences like depression and so on. Not, no, 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 absolutely not. You have no. And that's, 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 that's one of the advantages of enjoying life by yourself, mm -hmm. of doing things by yourself. You get to a point where, not that people's opinions don't matter, but it doesn't matter. I needed to do what I had to do for myself. Mm -hmm. I knew if anything happened to me, my, my, my mother, my sister, my grandmother, my family would not be able to handle it. So I had to pull people mm -hmm. to get it done. Mm -hmm. And Judy, if you say, I cry tonight, it's your fault. <laughs> I won't <warn> you. <laughs> um, but there are no regrets. It was not a nice experience. I'm trying to imagine. It was not a nice experience, you know, um, but it was a necessary experience to get me to this point where I am now, you know, where gratitude is a must. No, gratitude you get to be <laughs> Gratitude is a must. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who inspire me silently, you know, um, for, you know, just for the promo video, I wore my shirt. Leave before you leave. Yeah. Craig Harris. Mm. Right. When he came up with that, I remember seeing that on Facebook. Craig worked with me for a couple of IT jobs that we have. Mm -hmm. But that saying, leave before you leave, always resonated with me. And it got me through a lot of the times when I felt like, you know, I was just existing and not leaving. Mm -hmm. And even if it was just to get myself up, and that's when my cousin Steve Astofan came in will ensure that he knows what sea baths do for me and how much I enjoy early morning sea bath or late afternoon sea bath. So he made it a point of duty to check me at least two, three times a week. You know, we'll go down to Miro and get those sea baths and we'll just talk or just not talk and just be in the water, you know. Um, but understanding that Life is waves and ups and downs, and you have to find that strength to come back up when you go down. You know, I mean, there, there were family members. I remember one family member um, sent me a message. Oh, I hope you're not up there just feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, no. You're doing something for yourself now, just not up there feeling sorry for yourself. You know, and um, I'm like, well, this one I'm going to ignore. Yes, for sure. This one I'm going to ignore. 
all right? Because mm -hmm. at this point, I don't give a rat's ass mm -hmm. who gets affected, but I am doing what I need to do for myself. Mm -hmm. so, if you hope you're not up there feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. You're not feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> you were going through. I was going through shit. You were going through shit, that's shit. it. You know? <laughs> you know? You, in terms of the, the, the fact that you, you, got, you got help um, for the, the, the challenges that you were facing, um, is that something that you would advise? Somebody's listening, somebody's probably going through a situation, they're feeling depressed. You wallowed in, in the sorrow you could see for about two mm -hmm. months and a half before you made a move. What would be the advice? Um, Ronald to somebody who probably not as severe as you did but somebody who's going through some level of depression some level of, of, of sadness um, some level of feeling that they can't take it anymore they can't do it anymore what would be your recommendation? You're never alone no one is alone unfortunately there's a saying the one you love never loves you mm -hmm. So even in, in, in life, for instance, I'm going through this. There are people that I felt who should have been the ones to be there for me were not there for me. And then there were others who you may not have in high regard, but these are the ones putting their neck out for you. So what I've learned is you gotta gravitate to these people. You gotta move to these people. And if you're a genuine person, you can never turn your back on these people who are there for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? For some reason, human nature, we always want that, that gratification or that, that, um, that love or whatever it is from somebody else who's not giving it to us in that way. They don't see us that way. Right? And there are people that I have us in high esteem, but we don't see them that way. Yep. But what I've learned is that these are my people, and I will learn to move in their circle. I will learn to have them around me. I will learn to enjoy them, right? Because these are the ones who genuinely care about me, mm -hmm. right? You're never alone. When you go through those things, you feel like you're alone. You feel like nobody will ever understand. There's always somebody who will understand. There's always somebody who understands. There's always right? somebody who There's understand. always somebody who understands. And this saying that um, there's always somebody who has a worse than you. Yes. Doesn't, doesn't no, do shit for me. No, my situation is my situation. It doesn't don't do tell shit me for me. No, I don't want to hear about anybody else no. because <laughs> when anybody going through their stuff, it's their world, they feel like the world is ending. So whatever else somebody else is going through, when I'm in a better place, I can understand it. But when I'm going through this, it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. to me. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense to me. Alright? So it, it took some time, 18 months later, mm -hmm. here we are. When we come back, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we are going to talk about the next step. Sure. What was the next step for Ronald Astafan? This is a song that you wanted us to play for you tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's Taurus Riley, she's royal. Um, can you tell me what it is about that song? It's for my mom. It's for my mom. She's royalty. She'll always be royalty. With all her flaws, you know, her perfect flaws, she's going to be royalty. And she's my only mother. And she loves me unconditionally. We've Mama's had, boy. We've had, we've had <laughs> our roles. Of course. You know, we've had our tough times. We've, I think we've had times that we wanted to maybe kill each other. Um, but at the time, I remember at the time of Korea where she didn't want to take vacation because she was worried about me and I didn't want to take vacation because I was worried about her. So neither of us would fall down. Both of us would fall down. Both of us would fall down. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, but she's royalty. Ready four minutes moving down past the 10 o'clock hour. This is the In The Spotlight radio show, our guest tonight, Ronald Astefan. And I'm really loving the conversation that we're having tonight. And again, you know, a guest like that is someone, um, when we're done, there will be lessons learned from his experience, from his life. There will be opportunities to listen, pay attention, 
and imagine yourself if this were to happen to me how would I have handled it would I have handled it the same way that he did would I have just crashed would I have acted probably earlier to get professional help whatever the case is Well, he's royal in my view tonight. <laughs> um, you've been through a lot, um, Ronald. Um, I, and I know that it's not the easiest thing for you to be sitting here tonight sharing with us. But, you know, Fredina, I don't know what to do, but I feel so relaxed. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm happy I, to I, hear I, that. I, I, I <laughs> thought I would have gotten a malvas. Honestly. <laughs> But I feel so relaxed. I feel like I am. Like we have having a breakfast that we go to. Yeah, you know what I mean? Some good conversation over yeah. some good food. Yeah, good food. Both of us love. Yeah, that. So, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> but Ronald, the good food cooking has not stopped. So we have, may have closed its doors, but that led to a new birth. Let's talk. Yeah. Um, Yes. To some extent. Even for home. At home, uh, it took me more than nine months before I could face the kitchen at home. I couldn't face the kitchen. The most I would do was a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the most I would do. It was and very then, hard. And then, uh, thankfully, um, there's this little business place in St. Joseph that does pizza. And they actually deliver all the way up to my home. For five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. All the way up there. Yes. They even name a pizza after me. <laughs> Chef Wiggy's Pizza. Oh my God. <laughs> Is that your nickname? Well, yes. Well, Chef Wiggy. It started off as as Kello, then Simon Butler and Joff changed it to Skello Wiggy, and then when I went to study, um, everybody said I was a chef, so they decided to call me Chef Wiggy. Oh my God. Yeah. So it's just like yeah. What well, for now it's Chef Wiggy. It's chef Wiggy. Yeah, okay. Yes, chef Wiggy. <laughs> What does and the so, Wiggy stand for? Well, remember, it's just, it's just Simon and Joff playing around with my nickname, making oh. something rhyme. Okay, okay. Um, from scale of Wiggy, I don't know. Oh, gosh. Just, <laughs> just craziness. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, when did it start? After, I actually... Nine months, you didn't do anything in the kitchen. That's at home. Yes, but I, home. I, I started to go back to the kitchen at we have when the independent season was coming up and Kravax is it. Yes. So even then, I mean, I have to give mention to a few of my staff members who stood by me. I mean, quite a few of them don't want to see me now. For whatever reasons, that's up to them. But that is behind me and that's not going to weigh me down. But um, Dwayne Libla, my office assistant, and my brother, my friend, stood by me and still stands by me. Marcus White, the pastry cook, um, Renet Esprit. Um, so Marcus and Renet were the ones who helped me get back on my feet in terms of the kitchen. Started to do the crab backs again, and then slowly started to do it again. After the crab season finished, then said, okay, let's start doing some, <coughs> excuse me, some cakes and pastries and stuff. And um, later on, Alvin Sarah, who is um, my nickname for him is Pakistan. If you want to pack up your whole house in a, in a, in a <laughs> Suzuki Swift, he can do it for you. Um, but he's my right hand when it comes to events and, and setting up and that kind of stuff like that. So these four stood by me, you know, and they're still there. Um, some more than others, some everybody, like everybody else, they have their own journey mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. um, but there will always be gratitude to them for not um, abandoning me, you know, and so forth. And then I'm back with the crab axe. Hmm. And um, I did really, really well last year with crab axe. Really? Yeah, just just three orders only, not doing retail, just by like half dozens and dozens, and so on. And then it slowly moved, and. Um, I've always had this dream to open a cocktail lounge called Pamplemousse Rouge, which is like um, pink grapefruit. Grapefruit. Yeah. 
So there's a, a, a kind of a sexy connotation to that name or to the pronunciation. So I just decided to try and rebrand myself. Taflamoose. Taflamoose. Roos. 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 Um, I just use Pamplemousse for now. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have renamed um, my home to Villa Pamplemousse. Villa Pamplemousse. Mm -hmm. Love it. It can be used for events, um, weddings, receptions, ceremonies, you know, corporate events, whatever it may be, you know, and so on. And um, so I do start back with the pastries and stuff like, like that. Um, Marcus, actually, I think, well, Guia was the only person Marcus ever worked. So, mm -hmm. like me, we have is all in you, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I made a, a special commitment to him to stick by him no matter what, because he stuck by me, oh. and no matter what, I would be there for as long as I could. And so, and then little by little, as I got out of the depression and tried to smile again, and you know, uh, have happy thoughts and take more jet blue flights, <laughs> and so on, <laughs> um, I decided to just you know branch a little bit. Um, it took me more, more than six months to even think about renting the property. Mm -hmm. And so, and thankfully, and it's now, rented now. thankfully now I have four tenants, four good tenants. Um, so it's fully rented. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot God less stress. Good. It's a lot less stress. Yes. You know? Um, so God is good, yes. God, God is good all the time. So, so what do we do with problems? Um, what are the services? I, I, what, 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 what are the services products available? We do for now weekly, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. We do crab acts for delivery, okay. um, pastries, okay. selected pastries. Mm -hmm. um, on a Friday, I do my special cheese rolls and I do a homemade um, pasta sauce. Okay, everything is, has to be pre ordered, right. I don't do anything, and right. hope it sells. Right, okay, no, okay, everything is done yes. based on order. Okay. Um, and other orders coming in. Oh yes. God is good. Oh yes, for sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, on average, I get to bed about eleven, eleven thirty at night, and I have to be up by five o'clock in the morning. You know, um, then we do rental of of event items like cutlery, crockery, glassware, tablecloths, tables, any kind of thing. Like that. Food warmers, we do that. So we, we I, I get a, a good bit of business from some of the hotels and people having private events mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Then the venue for weddings. weddings I have okay. a few weddings coming up. I have a few yeah, events to a up. wedding there. Yes. Very you beautiful. Know? So well. I'm still doing some upgrades. Okay. You know, um, even um, early on this year, I did a, a, a makeshift kitchen downstairs where you would have been, where you would have attended the wedding, okay. where the food would have been stored. Okay. Gone for. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't sure I wanted to get back into the food. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to, I needed to get some oh, income. It was so good. Uh, nice. <laughs> you know, I need to get some income. So and it was different, by the way. It wasn't the traditional. At uh, the wedding I came to, I don't know if you remember which wedding I, I came to. Think it's a fancy. colleague of mine, yes. Yeah. And the food, it was not food, food, but it was. Mm. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, a, lot people, a lot of people contacted and said, um, What are your packages for weddings? Mm -hmm. I'm like, No, we don't do it this way. Packages is, is developed to suit your right. needs, your desires. I sit down with the, with the clients, I ask them what they like, um, what, what do you imagine happening at your wedding, what is it, what's your favorite dishes, you know? A lot of times people send you a menu, can you cause this for me for a wedding, and you have bread, beans, and provision, and macaroni, mm -hmm. and cheese, and like, no, 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 we ain't going on that road there, no, no. This is Sunday food and it's your wedding, which is going to happen once hopefully. Come on. So you want to have something very different. Come on. Alright, so we ain't gonna do the no provision platter or red beans. I'm like, all right, I said, can you imagine red beans falling in your nice white dress? <laughs> you know, I never thought of it that way and they'll want curry goat and so I'm like, you know, you know, this kind of events, ideally you want boneless meats. Yes. I remember as a young boy I went to Laro Creole and I ordered chicken. And when I tried to cut that chicken, the bone went from my plate to another table. So since then, it's only boneless meat at events. <laughs> only boneless meat at events. Because it's not a pretty sight when you're fighting it for bone. No. And some of us cannot resist and we want to suck that bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
so 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 at this time that is what if if someone is is listening now they would like to reach you yes. is there a public number that yes. we have um, yes. my number is seven six seven six one seven mm -hmm. two nine three zero two nine three zero you can get me on whatsapp you can get me on facebook okay yes. um is there a chance that we go back into the restaurant business never Ooh. absolutely not never I cut off my right hand, my left hand, well, my left hand. My left hand. Your left, that. your left hand. My left hand. Oh, yes. so I'm protected that way too. Mm -hmm. No, that's not going to happen. Not happening. No. Not today. Not, not tomorrow. tomorrow not, not ever. ever. You're that's done ever. with that. No. You know. Right now, um, we we have was located. We have um. There's a star, star line, Idol kitchen. Yes. Nigel Fabian. I heard the food there is pretty good as well. Yeah. Plug in, send yeah. me a, a, my lunch oh, yes. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, I was just being funny. You know, the other day I was telling I said, Nigel, you're the only place I go to eat and I don't even know what's on the menu. I don't ask. I'm just like, put a lunch on me and that's it. And that's it. And sometimes I don't know what the hell I'm eating, but I'm eating it because I trust him. He has good food, healthy vegan food. So even when, before I rented out the place when I was still operating from the kitchen at Kuya, that's what I would eat. Okay. During the week, okay. I would try to eat vegan during the week, and on the weekend, all hell breaking loose. Yes, yes. Yeah, all hell breaking loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, there's that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and he, has, he, he has this amazing um, uh, whole wheat bake. Okay. With an eggplant stuffing, and okay. his acres are very good also. Okay. But generally, his food is good. I've not tried it, I, and I definitely will. If, yes. if somebody sure. will, uh, maybe Francine again, who probably has tried it and told me about it, but yeah. definitely, yeah. I suspect it's worth a try. Yeah. So when I do have some time, I, I try to go help him out. We have a good relationship, okay. a good organization, because he's moved from a very small business to a very popular area. Okay. And I already told him for three year week he might need to hire security because some people are still gonna come there expecting to see Guia. Yes. Oh yes. You know? When people come down. Right. Yes. Yeah. So he was the last tenant who took over and the first additional tenant were Diamond Girls, shared from Dynamic Men. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Diamond Girls has been there for over ten years. Okay. Downstairs. Mm -hmm. Above her. Um, oh, so yeah. all of that is part of your yes, property. property yes. Okay. Of her is direct freight um, services, okay. you know, freight forwarders. Um, yeah, so they do that, and I have Tony, the Chinese national okay. downstairs, okay. where the patisserie is. Okay. But he, he's a really good guy. Um, when he used to do it, he did um, my acupuncture and acupuncture and massages and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the, the, the property is fully rented fully out. Rented. So that's another blessing yes. as we as we um we also yeah. indicated um before. So so Ronald, as it is now, um you seem to be in a good place. Probably not exactly where you want to be. I guess you're still working on yourself. Oh, yes. it's, it's, still it's, working it's, on it's yourself. Never, it's never gonna stop. It's not gonna stop. Never it's stop. not gonna stop. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a break for this one there. Um, I think this one was supposed to play at the end of the program, but I think yes. it's quite, it's quite um, opportune now um, to give this one for Ronald. This is a recent uh, song launched by Colton T, one of our very talented, very, very talented young men um, here in Dominica, and Ronald loves this one.
this one recently released by Colton T and Colton T, you know, good evening to you. You are truly a gem here in Dominica and we continue to pray for you as well so that you can continue to build on your music and really get to where you need to get to. Okay, Ronald, okay. so what did this one do for you? Well, Colton is a friend. Colton okay. and myself actually got to know each other through Pitbull's dogs. Oh. Yeah. I got some people to him and then he being a, a dog lover, um, it was necessary for him to see where the dog was being held. Okay. I mean, he oh. before, so he wanted to see where the dogs were going to be. Yeah, so he came up and he fell in love with the property. Yeah. I'm still waiting for him to make it really big so he can buy the property. He, <laughs> he, loves, he loves it he loves that bad. Yeah. Yes. But he, he, he loves his dogs and um, even if you were willing to pay for it, you would not get it unless he felt that um, the environment, the home, was mm -hmm. suitable. And, you know, I've been by his side for all, some of his struggles, especially his passing of his mom and okay. stuff like that. Okay. Talented. Very talented. Talented. Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his actual, his video special was filmed at my house. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that song, that song, hits to the core, you know, um, there's a part um, that basically says when you look for somebody, there's nobody there, you know, and you have to be the one strong mm. for everybody, you know. And you know of that. Oh, yeah. You've been through that. Oh, yeah, been through that. Yes. Yeah. Been there, done that, you know, and um, it's always a pleasure, even even when the, the um, expectations and not good, I will still do it again because um, that is who God made me to be. To be there for others in the time of need. And it, 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 there's a selfish aspect to that also because when I am there for somebody who's going for stuff, it actually allows me time to forget about my own shit, you know? So then I get that break. From my own stuff, as I help somebody else, yes. important. which is important. Ronald, we're slowly coming towards the end of the program. Throughout this process, through life, what are some of the lessons for you, especially in the last two years thereabout? There's so many. There's so many. One. Put God first, definitely. Um, there's a lot of things I wanted in my life that God didn't allow me to have, and thankfully so, because, or even people I wanted in my life, and thankfully so, because it would not have turned out good. Take time to understand yourself, what makes you happy. Um, I don't believe in the saying about be you. No, because be you can be bad, but be a better version of you. Whatever, whoever you are, be the best version of that you can be. You know? Um, I remember many years ago, and I still I still beat myself up for that. I was going to Jory's pharmacy to get something. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And um, on my way back to Guiao, I just bought a graphic mango from one of the, the roadside vendors. She must have been in her 70s or 80s. And when I bought it, she had the faith to make the sign of the cross and say, thank you, Lord, I sold something for the day. A mm. dollar fifty mm -hmm. for her day. And I remember days where I'd be crying or whatever it is, or worried about not paying this bill or whatever it is. But this woman sold a mango for dollar fifty, and she still had the strength to be thankful for that, and so, so it's be thankful for the simpler things in life, mm -hmm. everything, and um, know what makes you happy. Inner peace is paramount. Mm -hmm. That is the main goal. Nothing else. Nothing else. Inner peace. Inner peace. The business persons 
who are probably struggling right now. What's the advice? Uh, actually, I, I hinted in another post of mine about um, hooking up with Judy to form some kind of support group for people who are struggling. Okay. Not to give you financial advice <laughs> or... Or financial support. Or some financial support. To give you moral support, spiritual support. You know? Because a lot of people, look, last week, at least three people called me. They wanted to meet with me. Because they, they couldn't take it. One guy is 29 years old and he's just been diagnosed with high blood pressure. Oh my God. Right? Um, and he's like, he can't do this any longer. And I'm like, I don't want to see businesses closed down, but I rather your business closed down and you stay alive than and you, you stay keep it open sane. and stay sane. And you keep or than you keep it open, and you go down a road that's not going to be pretty. You know. So as I told him, you decide. You have to. I'm with the pros and cons, right? You decide what you want to do, what you want out of your life. If I'm 29 years old, um, you're dying with high blood pressure, mm. which is, I've been, done, I've been there, I've mm -hmm. done that. I suffer from insomnia, sleep apnea, high blood pressure, elevated um, glucose, anxiety, depression, um, just knew it. You were walking there? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not worth it. It's not worth it because most people will struggle to make that final decision based on what people will say. Yes. What people will say. Ooh. And I got to a point where I did not give tools what people said. But thankfully, 99.9% .9 of the comments after we have closed were all positive. positive. I remember October, four or five months after, I was walking in Rosa from, from Fresh Market to Guiaf. And this woman stopped me and she was just ranting and raving. Not in a bad sense, but she just couldn't come to terms with the fact that we are was close. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of stuff to do that day. And I couldn't do anything. I decided to cry in the middle of Rosso. I had to just go into my vehicle. I think I remember I left my, my bag and stuff at Guia, but I just had to go home. Because it was still hard mm -hmm. to accept where this journey was going to take me, you know, and um, there's nothing wrong in crying, there's nothing wrong in seeking help, there's nothing wrong in seeing a, a professional, right? It's important that you find somebody to talk to, and most times a total stranger does the job better than people closer to you, sure. right? Um, humans are getting more and more inhumane, and people will turn on you. Mm -hmm. But that is not a good enough reason not to trust people. You have to for your own survival. No man is an island, you cannot survive by yourself. You know? Ten years, twenty years down the line, what does that look like for or not? Hmm. Just peace. Peace. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing better than cooking something and you can just take 10 steps out into your yard and pick your fresh seasoning or whatever it is. <laughs> just the simple things, please be able to go to the beach. I just want I just want to be financially secure enough that I can take care of my own stuff and help people who genuinely need it. I think one of the, one of the things that hit me the most when I closed we are and I realized the financial burden I had was I couldn't help people. I couldn't help. So that bothered you? It bothered me. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many people out there who mm -hmm. need help. A lot of them don't know how to accept the help, mm -hmm. be grateful for it, but they need the help. Mm -hmm. You know? And um, unfortunately, the way I see, see things going, the youth in Dominica, they are majorly fushet. Hmm. If things don't turn around in this country soon. From the people's mentality to the way things are being done, to every aspect. It's not it's not it's a it's a multifaceted issue we have in Dominica. And 
soon there's not going to be any step ladder or any kind of ladder to come back up if we don't change things quickly. Hmm. That is something. Yeah. Yeah. Ronald, um, I don't know if you still want to just share some final comments with us. I'm not ready to go yet. You don't ready to go yet. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm so happy that I made you so no, no, comfortable. This is, this, is, this is much better than I thought. Oh, I'm happy. Serious. <laughs> I'm Serious. happy, I'm happy. I thought I would have had to come extra cheese straws. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did say there's something about your, your cheese straws that does something for you. Yeah. Did you have some tonight? You didn't one. need to. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. <laughs> Just one can do the truth. Just one, one can do the truth. <laughs> why don't we keep you smiling? <laughs> Rana, thank you so much. You know, I'm really happy that we have the opportunity to have this chat and to understand, you know, what happened. Because like you said, you know, Bria became a household name to us. And um, many of us, many of us patronized. Um, we have, as, as you mentioned, the pate banana. Another thing for me, as I said, was the sausage roll. You know, I really loved coming to Bria. But sadly, it's gone. But other things yeah. have been birthed as a result. Right. And some of the, I mean, the stuff Pamplos pro, um, produces now is Guia quality. It's Guia quality. It's Guia quality. There you go. And again, just an opportunity in terms of your contact. Um, give it again, please. My contact information for mobile or WhatsApp is 767-617-2930. Um, any requests you have in terms of events, catering, food, um, give me a call and we'll see how we can work it out. Wonderful. <laughs> and I'm smiling more because of my two boxes. You know? <laughs> Charles Wolf said that, you know, he may always be a pest in your life. Oh, he just wants you to know that. That's not going to change. <laughs> he wants you, he he want you to know that. And, um, you know, we really want to thank everyone for joining us for the program, for tuning in, um, whether via Facebook Live or via Q95 FM Radio. It really was an absolute pleasure. I always say to people, once you come here, even if on Monday, Ronald, is the long, one of the longest days for me, you know, you go to work in the morning, um, you get home only to get ready to come here. Right. Sometimes I wonder if my brain will even function at that time of the day, but it, got, it does, thank God. And um, I'm able to sit here and have what I call a conversation. I don't call it an interview. And I think that's why, you know, you became so comfortable um, with it. So thank you for being here and being an amazing guest. My pleasure. And thank, thank you, so you for my pleasures you. that you brought me. And thank you as well to Joe for sending me um, this wonderful drink as well. I also have to big up Josephine Gabriel and oh, yeah. Company Limited for our top it all water tonight okay. and i cannot forget my good friend of kalalu house good evening to you and um who else we have to big up we have to big up um jordan jerome and a few other persons i got so excited about starting off the program with ronald tonight that i didn't mention you know the the um no, the supporters of the program but ronald get home safely Thank you. and i look forward still <laughs> to my breakfast at some point that, in time. That, that definitely will right. happen soon. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. And I hope that you're already starting to have a wonderful independence. Those of you joining us for the season, we'll be happy to have you here in Dominica. If you're coming in, by the way, don't forget to drop off my flow to ensure that you have uh, your SIM card. We'll have that ready for you and ready to roll at the ports of entry, or you can come to our building. That's a wrap on the program for tonight. Until next week Monday, God willing, hopefully I can be here next week Monday. It's going to be a bit tight, but I'm going to try my best to be here. Good night and thank you again.